In this video, we are going to introduce one of the topics in engineering mathematics. And our topic is numerical methods. And the numerical methods, we are going to discuss uh, iterative methods, but we are going to concentrate on Newton lateral methods uh, because that is one of the methods that is uh, commonly examined in the Kenya National Examination Council exams. And then we are going to discuss interpolation and we are going to specifically concentrate on Newton Gregory. Uh, interpolation formulas that is backward interpolation and forward interpolation. Uh, now let us concentrate on the first item. We know that we regularly encounter uh, equations of the form function of x is equal to zero. So if we have a number uh, x equal to lambda and we substitute lambda in a function of x and both sides equal to zero, then we say lambda is a solution we can call it a solution or we can call it a root or we can call it a zero of the function f of x now there are quite a number of methods of uh, getting a zero or a root or a solution of the function f of x but for this particular topic we are only going to concentrate on interactive methods However, I should mention we have two types of method. Uh, we have what we call the direct method, the direct methods, or we also call them analytical methods. By the time we are covering numerical methods, we should have covered the direct methods or analytical methods at some point. Uh, mostly, even in your high school, you have covered them already. They involve methods like um, Quadratic, you can use quadratic formula to solve uh, a function of of x using direct method. Uh, you can also use a completion of squares, method like completion of squares. Uh, we can use a factorization method, which is one of the most common and basic methods. A factorization method. Or we can use a graphical method. Whereby you can plot uh, the equation y is equal to f of x in a Cartesian plane. And where they have cut the x axis, that will be the root uh, for that particular function of x. These are some of the direct method or analytical method we can use to solve a function. A uh, function of x is equal to zero or simply to solve a function uh, y is equal to f of x uh, which is always equated to zero and now we are not going to concentrate on this method because you already have done a lot about these methods we are going to concentrate with what we call uh, the iterative methods Let's concentrate on what we call iterative methods and they include uh, they are quite a number but we are only going to concentrate on only one of them we have bisection method bisection method is one of them which involve subdividing a bracket that contains a root of function f of x is equal to zero we have second method Then you have the method that is the topic of today's video, which is the uh, Newton, Newton Lapson method. So th these are some of the iterative methods. But they are quite a number. It's only that for the purpose of our examination, we only concentrate on what will really help you to get the marks. Uh, because the main aim of these videos is to help you get the marks within the shortest time possible and at least with the least effort uh, because you have a lot you need to do iterative methods and of course here yeah, we are mostly interested in the Newton Lapshaw method uh, these methods are based on approximating Uh, the root of function x equal to zero uh, 
uh, starting with one or more initial approximates. These iteratic methods, they are almost like some kind of try and error methods, whereby you will be approximating the root of a given function f of x is equal to zero, starting with one or more initial approximant. And this initial approximant we call it x naught. And in the process, uh, you are going to obtain a sequence going to obtain a sequence of uh, approximants and this approximant must converge we're going to obtain a sequence of approximants converging to the root of the function uh, the root of the function f of x or simply the root of f of x and this approximate we can call we can also call them iterates so we can use the term approximate we are going to obtain a sequence of approximate or iterates so we can the approximate we can also call them iterates and actually we should know graphically if you are to plot uh, in a Cartesian plane, say the curve of y is equal to a function of x. Say this is a uh, y is a function of x. Is what we are trying to show. And we know the function of x is always equated to zero. The root of the function, the root of the function of x is equal to zero. Is where this y-axis, this x-axis, is where a curve y is equal to a function of x cut the x axis so this is actually the root it's what we call the root or what we call the zero or what we call the solution of y is equal to a function of x or solution of a, a function f of x equal to zero now in this method, the iterative method, we usually start by guessing. We start with initial guess or initial approximate to the root of the function of x is equal to zero. For example, when we say our x naught, as we iterate or as we get the sequence of approximates, we should be converging to the actual root. Or the sequence of approximates that we are getting should be approaching the actual root x. If our approximates or our iterates are not approaching the actual root, but they are actually diverging or getting away from the actual root. In that case, we will not be able to get the root of the function of f x is equal to zero. And probably by then you will have made a mistake somewhere, so you need to check your working. If you realize your iterates are not converging to the root, but they are diverging away from the root. Remember, a function of f x is equal to zero. For example, if you have a f of x is equal to maybe x squared. Uh, 3x plus 4 or minus 4. Of course, we expect these to have two roots. This expression there to have two roots. So, this is one of the roots. Probably on the other side, there could be another root. So, in this case, also, if there is another root x, we need to get another approximate x naught, which could be anywhere. Now, there is a difference between the iterative method and analytical methods. Analytical methods, they are based on finite number of steps. Analytical methods, they are based on finite number of steps. In that, you know the number of steps you need to get the actual root of the solution function of x is equal to zero. And uh, you get all the root at the same time. For example, you use the quadratic formula, your x, your x, 1, 2, will be equal to minus b plus or minus root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. 
So you get both routes. X1 and X2 at the same time. If you use factorization method, you get both roots at the same time. If you use completion of square method, you get both roots at the same time. If you use graph method, you get both roots at the same time. But now, for the iterative methods, they are based on you. You don't know the number of steps, infinite number of steps. You do not know how many times you need to iterate to get the actual root. It could be three times, four times, five times. At some point, it also depends on the accuracy. How are you accurate when you are iterating? There are these methods, the iterative method. You can only get one root at a time. For example, in this particular curve, if we start by approximating the root, the first root, uh, with x not equal to a certain value, we will iterate and get the solution or the zero for this particular root, for this side of it. And then you have to start with a new approximate and then you can get a complete set of approximates or iterates that will converge to the root. So that is it about the iterative methods. And some of the iterative methods are quite powerful methods. For example, Newton Lapshan method. It is used in uh, computer simulations to solve various problems. For example, in the electrical engineering, it is used in what we call power, power flow studies. So it's uh, iterative methods are quite powerful methods that can be used to uh, solve various problems where we can start with a number of approximates. Now, we have the newton lapson method. Lapson. Let us write the formula. We, know, we have said function of x is 0, or we know a certain function of x is always equated to 0. But of course, the variable can be anything else, it doesn't have to be x. If you are to approximate the root of that uh, function, the actual root x will be equal to the initial approximant plus the error in the approximation. Because whenever you approximate something, of course you always have an error in your approximation. It's unlikely that it will be very exact in your approximation. Now if we put that in the function, we say x is equal to x naught plus h. Of course this will still be zero. But now let us expand, expand using Taylor's uh, Taylor's theorem. This will be. We did this at some point. Taylor's theorem by now should not be a problem. It will be function of x naught plus the error h. First derivative of the function of x naught over one factorial plus h square. Second order derivative of the function of x naught over two factorial plus h cubed uh, that order derivative of the function x naught or over three factorial plus all the way to the last term in that series, which is h to the power n, the n derivative of x naught over n factorial. That's theta series. If you are in your third year of study doing a diploma in electrical engineering, of course, you do this in your, in your second year of study. So, this one should not now be uh, an issue. Uh, but now, whenever you are approximating, of course, we expect the error in your approximation to be a small value. So, assuming h is a small value, we can neglect terms with h squared and higher powers of h. Neglecting, uh, neglecting terms with h squared and higher powers of h. Log it function of x naught plus h is equal to 
uh, function of x naught plus h part of the derivative of that of one factorial. One factorial is one. But now, what did he say? Function of x naught plus h is equal to zero. So zero is equal to uh, plus h as of the derivative of x naught. You can take uh, this term on the other side of the equation to get negative h as of the derivative of x naught, function of x naught is equal to function of x naught. Let us divide the root by h. I mean by let us have h on it in this on this side of the equation. So that now we can say h is equal to negative function of x naught divided by the first derivative of the function of x naught. We need to get the value of x. So that now we can say x is equal to x naught minus what is h function of x naught all over first derivative of function of x naught. But in general, in general, a better approximation to the root is given by our next approximation, which is xn plus 1, is it will be given by the previous approximation xn minus a uh, function of xn all over first derivative of function of xn. And of course, this is what we call the Newton action formula. And it's what we'll be using in our examples. I think now we can meet in our first example. As always, uh, remember to subscribe to the channel, to support the channel to grow and create more content for you. Remember to leave a comment or a question. Uh, which topic you'd like me to make content on or how have my videos helped you in the past also remember to watch my content online is very very key to watch the content online so that you can help this channel grow you can also watch the ads that you are seeing on my youtube channel because by watching the ads remember you never know what you learn from the ad and at the same time it is one of the biggest ways you can help this channel to create more content for you especially for those guys who did the examination they got the pass they are back at home they have no other way of devising these videos really really help them a lot and i've realized most of the people who follow my youtube channel are the people who already did their exams got the first and now they have no other way of devising or they have no one to help them devise but following videos on youtube